everybody, welcome to the vlog. Mary's here. Hello. <laughs> Papa John's driving. Uh, it's 7.20 p.m. on March 13, 2023. We just did our taxes. We filed together for the first time. <laughs> Husband and wife. Guess who was complicated? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think she spent about as much time with yours as she did on mine. You're busy looking at your phone. Well, yeah, because I had nothing to do. My stuff's simple. Uh, anyways, point being, um, if you're checking out this vlog, you want to jump around. I time code everything. Look for those gaps in the timeline or open the description. See that big thing of blue numbers. You can jump around, skip around, come back, whatever you want to do. Um, in this vlog, unfortunately, there's not going to be cooking. I was going to maybe make something pretty simple, but honestly, we got hungry during taxes, so we're just going to go have Indian food now. <laughs> So no cooking tonight. I will make a cocktail in this one. Um, since we did not live stream the Oscars, you're gonna get a big section of our reaction to the various Oscar wins and stuff like that. So that's a section you'll get in here. Uh, we definitely have some movie reviews. I gotta talk to you about Scream 6. I'm hopefully seeing the Last of Us finale with Dad tonight, so I'll try to get that in here as well, my thoughts on that. And uh, that's probably about all we're gonna be able to do in this one, because I need to get it done and I need to do some trailers and I got it. Oh, we'll do a mu yeah, well. No, there's no music update in this one because there's nothing to update, other than the store is just about to launch. So, huh? I guess I do have the. Yeah, okay. We'll do a new music music update. I do have a new merchandise thing that's not quite available yet, but will be maybe by the time you see this or very shortly after. All right. So, anyways, that's what that is. If I feel like it or think about it, I will show you what I get for dinner. But probably just gonna enjoy dinner and then go home and do things. Let's vlog. Okay, so I got lazy. I'm exhausted. This is what I feel like, but I am still spry as fuck. Uh, it is Oscar day. We're going to vlog the Oscars a little bit, if I remember, until I get too drunk. Um, I'm making chicky nuggies. We got Mike. We got Mary. And this is how I feel today. <laughs> this is how I feel every day. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, I don't know. I saw 36 of the 37 nominated films, and... Uh, one, okay, so, so four, five, six, and nine of the 15 nominated shorts, and I'm tired of Oscar movies. <laughs> we'll talk more about it later. I, I just, got my butt plug. There we go. <laughs> butt plug for the, for the win. I can almost get all of us in there. Just, there we go. Woo! All right, anyways, fuck off. I don't know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> satiated chicken nuggies were yummy. Except I had the hearts. I mixed those with some other ones, and the hearts are white meat, and I had these dark meat ones that are better. Anyways, real quick, uh, the others are downstairs. I'll get down there in a second. They're watching the pre-show. They're appreciating that I'm not talking over it for once this year like I have to when we stream. But I thought real quick, let me try to run through the nominations and what I think. So, I'm just going to go down the actual academy, so it's in the order they're listed. So we have actor in a leading role. With Austin Butler, Colin Farrell, Brendan Fraser, Brendan Fraser, yeah. Paul Mescal was boring as shit. Well, After Sun was boring as shit. Bill Nye was great in Living. Colin Farrell is amazing. I'll be okay if he gets it. Austin Butler is amazing. I'll be okay if he gets it. But come on, let's not kid ourselves. Brendan Fraser was amazing in The Whale. Actor in a supporting role. Uh, Brendan Gleeson for Banshees. Brian Ty Ooh, Brian Tyree Henry was awesome in Causeway. Jared Hirsch in The Fablemans was okay. Barry Keoghan. Keoghan is awesome, but come on, Ki Hu Quan for everything, everywhere at once, hands down. Anything other than that is a fucking travesty. Actress leading role, Kate Blanchett in Tar is incredible. Ana de Armos is amazing in Blonde, even though I kind of hated that movie. It was a uh, pretentious and artsy for pretentious and artsy sake. It wasn't serving the story in any way I could understand, so it was just annoying. But she was great in it. Uh, Andrea Risebro for Two Leslie. Oh yeah, she was fantastic in that. That was a really good movie, by the way. Michelle Williams and the Fablemans, good but average. Michelle Yeoh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay, I'm rooting for Michelle Yeoh, but I think Kate Blanchett really deserves it here. I will be happy with either of those two, because I didn't really love Tar, but I love Kate Blanchett in it. Actors in the supporting, Angela Bassett, always great, but standard. Hong Chao for The Whale was very good. Uh, Carrie Condon for ben Banshee's of Venice Sheeran. I don't think she's in it enough. <coughs> Excuse me, but then we have the tough choice. Jamie Lee Curtis or Stephanie Hsu? Hsu? For everything, every all at once. Listen, I think Stephanie had more to do and did more with it, but I also think Jamie was amazing and I'd love to see Jamie get an Oscar. So honestly, I'll go either way there, but Stephanie's my, my rate. Uh, I'm just running through so I don't have to talk over for you guys. <laughs> yeah, see? Uh, animated feature film. Del Toro's Pinocchio was good. Marcel the Shell's shoes on was so good, so much better. I would not leave it, leave it where the cats can't get to it. Set it on top of the fridge or something, my, my baguette. Or put it in the oven. 
because I will I always look in the oven before I preheat. Uh, Puss in Boots, though, is amazing. Sea Beast was really good. Turning Red is kind of the weak choice here, even though I did like it. But honestly, it's got to be Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots is somehow a magically amazing movie. Although I will not be mad if it's Marcel. And I can totally understand Pinocchio. Cinematography, ooh, all quiet on the Western front. Bardo, uh, weird movie. I didn't like it at first, but it really got into it and has some beautiful cinematography and great shots. Elvis, Empire of Light is gorgeous. Tar is not very memorably gorgeous, but I'm sure it was. So I am probably leaning towards Empire of Light. Or Bardo or All Quiet. I guess I'll go for Empire of Light, although that is a pretty strong category. Costume design, ooh, Babylon, ooh, Black Panther. Elvis, everything everywhere all at once. And Mrs. Harris goes to Paris, by the way. I'm so glad. Thank you, Oscars, for giving us a nomination. So we did end up watching it because what an incredibly charming, lovable, adorable film. And, you know, I got a soft spot for the designs of, Z of Dior. So I really like that. I'd be very happy for that to win. But, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Costuming, Black Panther. The co Even though it's not my favorite movie of the Marvel stuff, not my favorite recent Marvel movie, it is uh, beautiful to look at. Directing, Banshees of Inishirin. Okay, everything, everywhere, all at once. Come on, give it to the Daniels. I know they won't, but give it to them. Spielberg's probably gonna get it for Fablemans, even though I don't think this is his strongest effort. Tar for Todd Field. Triangle of Sadness is so good, though. But I'm obviously pulling for the Daniels, and anything else is a travesty. Okay, documentary. Uh, most of these are really good. All That Breathes was interesting. All the Beauty and the Bloodshed uh, was, which one was that? Was that the last one I watched? Oh yeah, it is kind of dull. It was It was more, the interesting part was the subject, the lady and her art, not necessarily the documentary itself. Fire of Love was great, and I'd love to see a movie made about those people. A House Made of Splinters. Uh, I'm trying to even remember what that was. It didn't stick with me. But Navalny uh, is incredible. It's like a it's like a spy thriller, but as a documentary. And I will watch, I would like, it's a, one of those rare documentaries I'd be happy to go watch again. And I'd love a follow-up. So that's my, my there. Okay, documentary short film. I gotta be honest, I could have probably gotten into maybe even three more of these. But this was like the last category for me. I only ended up watching one. So I don't really have a valid thing here. I saw Stranger at the Gate. It's okay. I just got tired and couldn't do it. <laughs> Editing, The Banshees of Inishir and Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar and Top Gun. Uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once is a sweep for me. Although Elvis is a very close second. Right, international feature film, ooh. All Quiet on the Western Front is phenomenal. Probably my winner here. Argentina 1985, phenomenal. I'll be happy if that wins as well. Close, bored the ever-loving shit out of me. You know how much I hate Call Me By Your Name. I'd rather watch Call Me By Your Name a thousand times. This this made that look interesting. EO is cute but weird and I don't, I don't really love it. <laughs> and uh, The Quiet Girl is the one film we could not see this year because some dipshit somewhere said, nah, let's not put it out anywhere anybody normal can see it if they didn't go to the festivals, fuckers. So can't be 100% on that category, but that's my thoughts. It's, I would love to see All Quiet take it, but I'm happy for Argentina 1985. Makeup and hairstyling, All Quiet, the makeup in that is incredible. The dirt, the grime, the grit. The Batman, the makeup in that is incredible with the penguin. Black Panther, uh, some of the hairstyles in that are fantastic. Elvis, awesome. The Whale, awesome, I guess. There's not a lot of makeup in there, I don't think. Uh, so here, hmm. I think I would like All Quiet to win this one, but I'd be happy with the Batman or Elvis. I'd understand Black Panther or The Whale, but I'm, I'm rooting for All Quiet in that. Musical score, All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, Banshees of Inishir, and Everything Everywhere All at Once, and The Fablemans, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Again, sweet for me. Music in Babylon is absolutely incredible, so that'd be my second choice. Honestly, didn't like some of the music choices in All Quiet on the Western Front, so that's actually lower for me. Fablemans is John Williams, so that's somewhere in the middle of my pack, and Banshees, eh. So yeah, Everything Everywhere All at Once, or Babylon. I don't do original song, I think it's a dumb category. Okay, best picture, All Quiet on the Western Front. I'm okay with that winning. Uh, Avatar, it's not gonna win, but I'd be okay with it winning. It changed fi filmmaking again. It's exciting, it does exactly what a film should do. It transports you to a fictional place that can't exist and makes you feel real and lets you live in it for a while and gives me a cool story. I mean, sure, the story's not much, but he's... Avatar isn't about story, it's about characters. I don't think people understand that, and I like the character journeys. Banshees of Inishirin, that could very well win. It is a great movie. I don't think it's the best here, or at least it's not my favorite, but it's not the best or most interesting in its filmmaking. Elvis is a Baz Luhrmann movie, so 
Some people don't like that. I love it. I'll be fine if that wins, but come on, everything, everywhere, all at once, hands down. I've been saying it since I saw it in February. Hands down winner. Nothing has changed my mind ever since. I've never wavered. I am worried about something we'll talk about in a second. Fablemans, I like the Fablemans. I didn't love it. It's not Spielberg's strongest. It's kind of mid-tier Spielberg for me, and uh, it could have been better. Tar, excellent movie, but one I only need to see once. Top Gun, I love it. I love it. Got a no nomination here. It changed uh, aviator movies for me. Can never see another fighter pilot movie again. If they don't do it for real, it's not going to feel right. Triangle of Sadness was a super pleasant surprise with some great twists and a great way to kind of weave three different narratives together and it's some pure filmmaking and I really loved it. Women Talking is really script based, um, less so filmmaking based uh, and I did like the movie a lot but it's, all, it's low end for me. So of course I want everything everywhere all at once to win. Um, I'd be happy with a few others but I'm worried what's going to happen is Banshees and everything are going to split the vote and then it's going to go to the Fablemans. We're going to have another Green Book situation here where, you know, there were far superior movies, but a middle of the road movie wins because the vote got split. <laughs> That's my prediction. I hope I'm wrong. I'll be a little mad if Banshees wins though. It's not, it's a great movie. It's not the best of those. It's not the best made of those. Production design, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, ooh, Babylon, ooh, Elvis, oh, The Fablemans, eh. Mm. I mean, I could see Avatar. There's a lot of design work in there and it's great. All Quiet, I could see that. Babylon, I could see. Elvis, I could see. Let's, let's narrow it down. It's Avatar or All Quiet. Let's go. I think for this one, I'm going to go All Quiet on the Western Front. It is a gorgeous costuming and, and everything. So, yeah. Short film animated. We did able, able to see all these. The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. It's okay. Uh, the Flying Sailor. It's got some cool moments. It's a little late, a little weak in the end. Ice Merchants is, uh, I don't know. Kind of works, kind of doesn't. But my two favorite are My Year of Dicks, and that was my favorite until the last one we saw, which is An Ostrich Told Me the World is Fake and I Think I Believe It, which is a phenomenal short film. Uh, go see that one. It's on Vimeo. It might be on YouTube. If you only see one, see that. It is such a cool take on stop motion animation. It does something really existential and um, amazing. So I, I just need that one to win, but I'll be fine with My Year of Dicks because not only was that a great one, but I'd like to see them say that on TV. <laughs> Short film live action. Two of them were unavailable to us. We were not able to see The Red Suitcase and we were not able to see An Irish Goodbye. So we have Ivalu that I thought was dull and uninteresting. Le Pupil, which eh. But Night Ride, Night Ride is awesome. Has a good message. It's funny. It's charming. It's interesting. It's tense. So highly recommend Night Ride. All right. Sound, All Quiet on the Western Front is amazing. Avatar is amazing. The Batman though, that Batmobile, whew. Elvis, oh yeah, Top Gun. That is a stacked category. I think I want to give it to the Batman because that Batmobile alone. But Avatar, super close second for me because again, that is a sound design. And I obviously, I'm a little biased. I have uh, <laughs> extra connections now to Avatar because of the honeymoon. But you know, all quiet, all that stuff. I could see any of those taking it. So that's my, what I'm rooting for. Visual effects, come on, it's Avatar. If it's not Avatar, what the fuck are we even doing here? You may hate the Avatar movies, but you cannot deny the visual effects in the Avatar movies. <laughs> great, All Quiet on the Western Front's great. The Batman's great. Black Panther, I, I like that movie, but it does not. Its effects are not good, especially when you hold them up against Avatar. <laughs> and I'm not one of those like Marvel effects haters. I'm fine with it usually, but an Academy Award? Mm, no, <laughs> no. Go watch that ending battle boat scene and no. Top Gun, okay, that's a real contender because the way they use so much real air footage and then get all the explosions and stuff in there, very real contender, but I mean, come on. It's Avatar or nothing, right? All right, writing, adapted. All Quiet on Western Front, yeah, oh, Glass Onion. Living, Top Gun, Women Talking. I would love Glass Onion to take this. That movie is pitch perfect to me. I wish it had more nominations here. I'll be happy with All Quiet on the Western Front, but I am definitely rooting for Glass Onion. Women talking, I could understand. Top Gun, not a great script. It really is about the spectacle of the action. It's not a bad script. It's, they kind of just redid a script. <laughs> we will get into that. And Living is pretty good. Writing, original. Here's the last one we're going to talk about. Banshees of Inishirin is excellent. But everything, everywhere, all at once, come on. The Fablemans, eh, Tar. Eh, one, Triangle of Sadness is right there in third place, though. It's got to be everything, everywhere, all at once. I have a sneaking suspicion Banshees have been sharing, but maybe they'll give Banshees the writing so everything, everywhere, all at once can have the the the, uh, the directing or the best picture. Oh, okay. 
There you go. That's my thoughts. Mike's rooting for everything, everyone all at once. It's the only one he saw. <laughs> and I'll let Mary tell you a thing or two, probably. Maybe. What? Well, she's right here. Hi, what am I doing? Well, here. Uh, you don't have to go through every category. But best picture, you've seen everything but Top Gun. I let yeah. her off the hook for Top Gun. I think she's rooting the same, though, so. It should be everything, everywhere, all at once. Motherfuckers are going to give it to Banshees or Fablements. Yeah, I had that little discussion. <laughs> uh, you saw the uh, original screenplay, Banshees, everything, Fablements, Tar, Triangle, the sadness. Uh, everything. Yeah, of course. Uh, you didn't see that, but I'm going for Glass Onion and Adapted. Uh, yeah. Visual effects, we know is Avatar, sound. Okay, short film live action between uh, Ivalu, La Pupil, or Night Ride. Uh, not right. Yeah, same. Uh, animated. Oh, shoot. Uh, let's see. I would like to see an ostrich told me, but I can easily see it going to the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. I was really bored with that one. She liked that one more than I did, but fair. I, it, it's, I feel like it's one of those things that you have to be in a certain place in your life to actually enjoy it. That's very true. Uh, best picture. Oh, you just, you already, I already asked you that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you yeah. started with that. Uh, I don't care about I wouldn't song. mind Avatar one, but it's like, yeah, I don't think it's going to. Not against some of the others. Uh, I don't care about the score so much, makeup, hairstyling. Uh, international film, since you did see all of those. Uh, you didn't see the quiet room. Oh, that's true. Well, you saw everything I saw. Woo! <laughs> Science! Um, probably all quiet on the Western Front. I'd say in that, or uh, Argentina for me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just kind of getting hurt. Okay, uh, you didn't do the documentary short films, documentary feature film, uh, directing is not really your jam. Costume design, we Black Panther, we were talking about. Uh, oh, this is Harris. It's... I feel like Elvis might be the, the, the weakest, weakest one in here. Of those, yeah, and it's um, still strong. It's a stacked category. <laughs> everything Everywhere All at Once is actually pretty good for costuming. Yeah, some of those multi Wakanda ones. Forever hits it a little bit harder for me. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with you on that. Okay, animated. I... This one's a hard one for me because I enjoyed a lot of these. I, I Actually, I really liked Sea Beast. Um, Guillermo del Toro is probably the most interesting retelling of Poke Pinocchio I've ever seen. By far. And Puss in Boots was just a lot of fun. It's kind of a perfect animated film. That's why uh, it's, That's my pick, man. There's some kind of magic going on in Puss in Boots. That... I'm going to say Guillermo's probably going to end up taking it. Um, but Puss in Boots and Sea Beast would be my other okay. choices I'd be happy with. Uh, yeah. We don't need to go through all the actors, probably, because it's just a lot and my arm's getting tired. <laughs> all right, well, anyway, so there we you, you got... <laughs> you, you got some of the basics uh, of Mary's rooting. So we'll see what all we actually film or show and... There you go. That's our Oscar rundown. Uh, whew. All right, animated. Let's see. What are we going to get? Jimmy's monologue was great. The Oscar goes to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Okay, Pinocchio. I mean, worthy, but come on. Puss in Boots. Like, everybody loves Puss. It's so good. I think it's because it says Guillermo's. Yeah. Yeah. Guillermo's. Not you, Guillermo. It, 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 because they had the name attached to it. Oh, I know that name. He makes neat stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like that they're waiting for the Excalibur show back there. They're sitting at the... Bring on the mics! <laughs> All right. Come on, Kihu Quad. Come on! Uh. Yeah! Complete sweep, baby! Well-deserved Oscar sweep. Now get this man an Indiana Jones post-credit cameo. All right, I want to watch this speech. <laughs> I need to rewatch everything every while once. All right, come on, Jamie or Stephanie. Please don't get a split vote. Please don't cop out with Angela Bassett. And the Oscar goes oh, that'd be the worst. To... Yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jamie. yeah! yeah. Woo! <laughs> She's like, what the fuck, really? Yeah, she can't believe it. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yay. Woo. Oh, we even get mention of Halloween. <laughs> I'm actually tearing up for her. This is already one of the most emotional Oscars we've ever had. <sighs> yeah, he had to get a tissue. Okay. 
Well, I hope I'm still crying for the right reasons later tonight. <laughs> Come on, everything everywhere sweep. <laughs> Come on, Navalny. Navalny. And the Oscar goes too. That's kind of weird. It's so good. Navalny. Yeah! What? <laughs> when is the shoe going to drop? Political <laughs> voting. Dude, I don't even care if it's political. It's just such a well-made documentary. Like I thought I was I was gripped on the edge of my seat watching a, like a spy thriller, but it's all real. So, I think it's on HBO Max. Highly recommended. Woo! All right, short films. Wait, Oscar something? goes to Come on, Night Ride. An Irish goodbye. Can't comment because assholes didn't put it out where people could see it. Unless you went to fucking festivals. I really think there should be a fucking rule if it's not at least for a week before the Oscars generally, ava genuine, generally available to the general public. It shouldn't be eligible. It's bullshit. But whatever. Go see Night, Night, Train, Night Ride. It's awesome. All right, cinematography. This one's tough. Anything is worthy here. But maybe Bardo. All's quiet. All quiet on the Western Okay. Yeah. I thought this might be the weirdest category on this actually one, but... So it might be the category she thought it would actually win and in case that wasn't loud enough, I don't know. But um, yeah, I can get down with that. I think everything here was deserving. Uh, Barna was the most creative though, but okay. I gotta get bread out of the oven. These people are making, making me cook. <laughs> Snack time. Oh, garlicky butter. Very garlicky? Yeah, it just hit me in the back of my throat. I told you, I just kind of randomly threw a bunch of shit together. Yeah. You said there was no such thing as too much. No, it's great. It, I, but it's, it's, yeah, it's that, pungent. It, yeah. It's very potent. But that brie is really tasty. All right, more Oscars. Okay, makeup and hair. Another tough category. There was more in the whale than I thought. The whale. The whale. Well, you know what? In all fairness, hey, Jack. In all fairness, like I said, I just learned there was more makeup going on in the whale than I thought, which means I did not know there was any makeup going on. So I'll take it. There's another one of those stacked categories of it was all deserving. Costume design, another stacked fucking category. Ultimately happy no matter what here. That makes the most sense. I'll take it. Again, some of those were fantastic. Everything there could have been a winner, but. Wait, wait, wait. Her glasses are not big enough. Oh, to be a costume designer. That's right. We've discovered the bigger and crazier your glasses, the better a costume designer you are. Yeah, she's got like basic glasses. There's a little bit of flair, but not a lot. All right. Uh, international picture. You can only see four. Needs to be quiet or Argentina. All quiet on the Western yeah. Front. All right, I'll take it. Yeah! I mean, Argentina was great, too, but honestly, too, I hope this means that Argentina is out of the... I mean, uh, All Quiet's out of the running for Best Picture, hopefully. Just to better the chances of everything, everywhere, all at once. Not to root against the movie, per se. Yeah. That's really good bread and cheese. It's almost gone. Butter wasn't bad. It's crumbly. But yeah, that, that was a great version of All Quiet on the Western Front. The original's great, too, but this was awesome the bread's about to be gone. Good, because I'm going to keep picking if you don't. <laughs> and there's four pieces of cheese, so I'll, I'll take at least one piece of cheese if y'all are worried about getting rid of it. <laughs> I love my brie. <laughs> and I mean, the butter tastes good. It's just, you know, I just kind of made it as just a thing I had sitting around, so I was like, oh, we'll figure out what it is. Uh... Look at the little cheese sammies. Eric invented too much garlic. Hell yeah! That's why it's delicious. <laughs> All right, animated. Come on, ostrich or dicks. And the Oscar goes to the boy, the mole. I told you. I told you. Dicks are better. Yeah, that's my least favorite. We finally have a disappointment for me, a legit disappointment for me. But at least we heard Pedro Pascal say, "My year of dicks." No, he did. He said it in the package things when he named off the nominees. I, here's the thing. I don't think it should have won. I can see how it hit the people. Uh, this is the least interesting to me. Wow. Oh, well. Production design, another stacked. But come on, Avatar. Oh, thank you. And the Oscar goes to... On Avatar. All 
Okay, all quiet on the Western Front. I was afraid I was going to have to explain, damn you, Hugh Grant scrotum. <laughs> Which is a great joke. But no, seriously, all quiet. Uh, I disagree with that. Oh my God, all the trenches and the train work and the costumes. And, mm, we can disagree, but the yeah, dude's palace. I mean, like. I think I've seen those trenches a thousand times. You have not seen those trenches a thousand times. World War II movie. Uh, they didn't World do trench War warfare in World War II. Sorry, I misspoke. How many World War I movies are there actually? A bunch. No. Anyways, to each their own. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm wondering, why did Neil Patrick Harris go undercover to play a character to production design? <laughs> all right, congrats, all quiet. Neil Patrick Harris, it's uh, Dominic I think she was going for a different yeah, person undercover, though. Actor. And she was running with the joke. Well, just the guy from Lost. And, uh, no, that's. Yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Good job, all quiet. High five. Score. No, that's terrible. That music legitimately was distracting from the film often. All right, that counts as major disappointment number two, which is not bad, all things considered. But nah, man. Nah. What the fuck? What the fuck? That's why she was running from Cocaine Bear. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, visual effects. If it's not Avatar, what are we even doing here? <laughs> Is it Jack Black? I feel like Jack Black in there. Okay, that's visual effects. It was a real more real visual effects. Okay. Here we go. Visual effects. Avatar. Okay, thank you. You had me worried. <laughs> it is the Oscars. I could be like, who knows? But I mean, they reshaped the fucking game, man. Congratulations, Avatar. I can't wait for part three. By the way, it seems to be confirmed part three will have fire Navi that are very aggressive in their culture. So I was like, Bring it. Oh, I want to go. We flew over this like five fucking times, man. <laughs> I, I need to go back. <laughs> I need to go back to there. I mean, Mary and I are avatars. We have the Navi figures up there. We showed you those, yeah? I imagine it'll be all the earthly elements. Apparently, they will be having a big space battle before this saga is over. Okay. Like, it's, it's going to get wild. What I have heard rumors of what Cameron plans in these seven movies, which I'm now wildly on board for, it's going to be a blast. Like, this is just the ground setting in these first couple of movies, and it's just going to start getting wild from here. I'm just glad that Avatar 2 didn't bring another new TV trend. What, 3D? Like 3D TV. They really need to fix that. They need to perfect it. 3D is fucking awesome. And the 3D on Avatar 2 is amazing. The 3D TV stuff just was ahead of its time. Yeah, it wasn't quite perfect. I still have it. I still have some, but we have a 3D projector now, too. Not this one, but I haven't tried it. Anyways, yay, James Cameron. Yum. Uh, yum. Sure. Original screenplay everywhere, everywhere. Come on. Everything, everywhere. Woo! I honestly didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, I really thought they'd go Fablemans or something. But, oh, that is, that bodes well. That bodes well. I'm not getting anything from Mary. She's checked out and playing her game now. Now, I, I, I definitely agree with everything. Everything, 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 everything. <laughs> How about Florence Pugh's boobs? <laughs> yes! Adapted screenplay. Glass onion. Glass onion. Glass onion. 
Women talk about it. I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. I don't love it, but I'm not, I can't be mad about it. Because again, I think that movie, its strength was the writing. Not as strong as Glass Onion, but okay. Yeah. Alright, we're in sound, which is a stacked category of... I'm sorry, I can't hear you, what? I was just saying, I'm good with that. There are sequences in there that are pure sound design sequences. But every movie in that category. I, I would so love Plus the back. When they open the envelope, just the audio cuts out. <laughs> oh, that would be because of sound. Um, but yeah, like the Batman and the Batmobile roar, amazing. Avatar, great. I mean, it's all great. You'd think the war movie, because bullets whizzing, seems to get the Academy voters hot, but... But the sound design in Top Gun, yeah, very worthy. Ah, shit, I forgot to film, but yeah, RRR just took song. I didn't really yes. care, except I want that to be an Oscar-winning film, and now it is. Yes. How much do you think the producers of this film are kicking their own asses for not submitting to more stuff because they uh -huh. didn't think they would have a chance? And they would have been nominated like fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Always shoot your shot, people. Exactly, just submit. Yeah, it doesn't hurt, but fuck yeah. Again, I think all these songs as songs fucking sucked, but, but you know, it's probably the most entertaining song of the batch. Yeah. Now performances and use within the movie, different cat, different thing, but the songs themselves. But fuck yeah. Editing every theory, everywhere all at once. Come on. Or, or Elvis. Yeah. Oh my God, y'all. It may be happening. No, 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 sh sh stop it, Eric. Don't jinx. Yeah, you need to stop that. Yes! Yes! Okay, I, I might be very, very excited. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Since the day one in February when I saw this movie, I said, that is the winner. Ha <laughs> ha! Listen, we're doing directing, and it, I would kill for the Daniels, but I just feel like they're going to kiss Spielberg's butt. What? <laughs> oh my god, this might be ha oh, I don't want to Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna go watch Swiss Army Man and everything everywhere all at once. Yes! Fuck yes! Woo! <laughs> yes to me! Fuck yes! Okay. Oh shit. Alright, we're an actor. I'll take Austin Butler, but it's gotta be Brendan. It's gotta be Brendan. It better not be this guy. That movie was. And, uh, you know, I'll take Colin too. Colin was amazing. And Bill Nye was great, but Bill Nye's been great for decades. <laughs> but, um, that movie was pretty good. We liked that one. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, Mary. There's at least four movies with people in a movie theater looking at the screen with the projection beam. At least four movies nominated with that shot in it this year. All right, come on, Brendan. Come on, baby. And the Oscar goes to... Brendan Fraser. Yeah! Woo! God damn, it's like we're watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, Guess my... Guess what? Both... Actors from Encino Man won tonight. That's right. Polly Shore even got a shout out. I yeah. mean, what universe are we in? I want to stay in this one. Dude. He, uh, Ki Hu, Hu, Ki Hu Kwan. Um, fuck yeah. Okay, I got to hear this speech. Amazing. I got to see this. And Michelle Yeoh. This is an incredibly strong category. Other than Michelle Williams, who's great, but not in that role. I'm not going to be mad about anybody, but... It's gotta be Michelle. It's gotta be Michelle Yeoh. I still want to be here with you. Oh, I just looked up for like one shot of her. It made me emotional. Ooh, come on, come on. Come on. We can do this. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Every Oscar, every. <laughs> come on. And the Oscar goes to Michelle. Michelle Yeoh. Yeah! Oh yeah! 
Okay. <laughs> oh my God. The best part is at this point, there's only, I had like what, two categories all night that I thought were disappointments. Yeah. There's only potential for one more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, we can. Oh my God. Yes. Ah. Oh God. Here we go. Last chance to fuck it up. Oh God. Everything. Yeah! <laughs> Fucking yeah! <laughs> Seven out of eleven, yeah. Wow. Yeah! <laughs> Coming back out from backstage. This is this is the best Oscars. Oh my god! He's with Indy. Indy and short round. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes! Oh, even Spielberg is like shedding a tear, dude. This feels incredible. Woo! Best Oscars ever. Oh my god! Okay. Crew, All right. But not just these beautiful Fuck yeah. Here. All right. So let's do some movie reviews. Uh, Scream 6. Uh, obviously, we're not going to talk about Oscar movies. You kind of got that in our Oscar segment. But Scream 6, I really enjoyed. I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, I really enjoyed. Uh, I think it's a worthy sequel to Part 5. I'm ready for a Part 7. I had a real good time with it. A little more gruesome than usual. Some fun twists and turns and a major love letter love letter to all the other films. And more than any of the other films, I feel like this one really relies on you or you'll get better enjoyment out of it if you have seen and remember all the other movies more than any other screen movie we've done so far. I did not really miss uh, certain characters. <laughs> Character, characters as much as I thought maybe I would. But again, a lot of people say certain characters are important to Scream, but I'm like, no, Scream is all about Ghostface and like the mystery and the reveal, the Scooby-Doo of it, man. And I do really like the new characters and I like what they did with them in this one. Um, I will say I did kind of call some of, the, some of the killer, you know, but not exactly for the right reasons. I was on a sim, I was on a semi-correct path, but <laughs> uh, so it was, but still, it didn't ruin it for me at all. So that was a good time, and um, I do love that it was set in New York. I love the costumes, the Halloween element of it. I think that was a real fun play in, and of course, some of the nods. You know, like they were certainly watching a particular movie uh, in the beginning that went really well, and then there was this other death that used a particular scene from a movie where the movie is essentially shouting something to the character. Uh, <laughs> that comes true in a pretty brutal fashion. Um, yeah, and again, I like, again, without spoiling too much, the concept that now we're in a franchise, now it's franchise rules, and how it's sort of a remake sequel, rehash of a sequel, remake, se you know, like, all that stuff. It got, again, super freaking meta, and I really, really appreciated it. And again, it's one of those I think you're going to pick up more uh, for fun when you rewatch, too, because I think there's going to be, there's a lot of background details going on, particularly in the end. There's sort of a screen and some stuff playing on it that is like, I want to pay more attention to that because that stuff looks silly and fun. And I kind of wish and hope maybe they would release that on the internet. I think that would be really, really fun. But at the end of the day, I had a great time with Scream 5. So did my audience. And surprisingly, I ain't going to tell you anything about it. But if you didn't know, there's actually technically a post credit scene. I'm not sure why our whole theater decided to stay. I always stay for every movie, no matter what, just because I like hearing the music. But um, we're kind of glad we did. So if you didn't revisit it, it's, it's cute. It may not be worth it for everybody, but I really dug it. But that's my thoughts on Scream 6. And we have The Last of Us season finale. Now, again, I'm not going to really spoil here. I love it. It was great. It really did stick the landing. I do feel mildly, very mildly, uh, underwhelmed with the finale because every episode up to it was so spectacular. And this was the shortest episode of the entire season. And I feel like they kind of rushed through some stuff that maybe they could have built a little more tension into. But at the same time, I'm being really nitpicky. Like, it was still great. It still delivered what it needed to. And I think overall, uh, maybe the entire series could have used a little bit more of the monsters. Like, I know they really wanted to focus on the human drama, and they did a fantastic job of that. But really, like, the infected and the clickers and stuff, they're not in this show that much, like, at all. <laughs> and for the most part, you don't miss them. But in hindsight, looking back at the whole season, which is like the best video game adaptation we've seen yet, um, and I'm definitely excited for the next season, even though I haven't played the next game yet, and I'm debating, do I play the next game first and then see the show or watch the show and then play the game? 
But, um, you know, it's really, really good time. And it does end, again, very faithfully like the game. And there is a certain amount of violence and brutality in here where, again, it's not showing you the violence and brutality in a way to glorify it, but it certainly does focus on some of the aftermath and uh, how, you know, gross and horrible it all is. But the reasoning and everything, and I can't fault the characters. I'd probably be in the same boat. And there's some heartbreak and some tragedy and just... But at the same time, there's some beauty and some happiness and some joy to be found. And again, some more locations and sets and scenes that are straight out of the game in the most amazing way. So I did have a great time with it. I just wish maybe they'd given it an extra five or 10 minutes and, you know, taken some of those scenes and actually made them a little bit more than what they were. But not, I mean, I think that's just me being a fanboy and wanting a little bit more. You know, I don't think that's really a fault of the show as much as it's my own personal desires and expectations. But uh, I loved it. I'm glad we got to see it. It was a great time. And uh, I'm glad nothing can get spoiled for me since I knew the game since I was watching the Oscars Sunday night. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there you go. Another episode of, uh, uh, excellent episode of Lost Last of Us. And I went from watching Pedro as one daddy to coming home and showing Mary Mando and watching Pedro as another daddy. And it's really cool. And Pedro is daddy. Also, we decided if they remake uh, The Princess Bride at any point, he would be a good um, Montoya. Inigo, in, in, you, you kill my parents, prepare to die. You know, whatever. I think he he would be a great casting choice for that. <laughs> okay, that's my thoughts on The Last of Us. Okay, uh, so I, just random story, really short. Uh, this is a pain in the butt. I got hacked on my Facebook. It sucks. Uh, it, luckily, if it was going to happen anywhere, that's the one place, like... I, at least for promotional reasons and stuff, I don't so much mind that I have to start over. So I got one of those things where somebody got in, tried to get credit card numbers, changed what the whole account was, then posted some crap that got me permanently suspended, which is really dumb of Facebook. Like they should be able to tell that that's what's going on and that, you know, it wasn't the user because the only real bummers to come from this for me, they really came later. Obviously you feel that little bit of invasion, uh, that little bit of a uh, violation, you know, that somebody got into your shit and, and uh, just, really gave me a bad day <laughs> because then I had to re shut it down, change a crap ton of passwords in places and build a new Facebook and reconnect to people, which the lighter, the nicer side of that is it's a good way to kind of clean up and try again and retrain the algorithm to be a little bit better for me and a little bit more cleaner on my profile. Some people I don't need to be friends with, all that kind of stuff. And then it's kind of neat because some people you think you don't really interact with and maybe they don't care anymore. They reach out and friend request you. Like at least they care enough to want to occasionally see your post or something. So that's nice. The bummers are, um, I had that thing for like 14 years. So I liked having memories pop up and kind of remind me about this, that, and the other. So I'll miss that. And then of course I had my Facebook fan pages like the Drunken Movie Night page, the Zeppo the Movie page, the Eric Butts page, and the Eric Butts page. And uh, while those pages are still up, I no longer have any kind of access to them. So that's a bummer too. But again, I think in terms of promotion, those were all my weakest outlets anyways. So if it did have to happen anywhere, it happened there. But I just thought I would share that story with you. So that was uh, kind of one of the more starts of this week and why this week is on top of everything else, been a bit of a frustration and an aggravation. <laughs> and I know one of my buddies reached out because I did actually put out a mad tweet because um, one of the Oscar movies we thought we would get to see and couldn't because it was all a lie and I'd gone through so much tech trying to set it up to get to that place. And then it was like, nope, it's just the trailer. It's not actually the movie. It's like, nah. But uh, that's where a lot of that stemmed from. I was just really aggravated and pissed off about all that. Not like pissed off, but like, you know, subconsciously, I guess. Like I didn't realize it had bothered me as much as it probably was. But, um, sucks, man, so. And plus, I have, like, two-factor on there. I, I don't understand how they actually got into my account, but it's Facebook, so who knows. Uh, <laughs> all right, I just thought I'd share that story. Okay, so I guess there is a little bit of a music update. Let me close the door. It's gonna be a little louder. Um, so, this is mostly a merch update. Obviously, reminder, the Mary EP Part 1 comes out March 24th, 2023. Midnight Eastern, hope I'm gonna do a little live stream something for that. And I'm very, very excited about it, very excited. Hopefully I've started practicing some new songs, hopefully I'm gonna start actually working on the new part two uh, this week. Merch-wise, um, I am setting up a whole new store. You're gonna still see the YouTube stuff this spring, don't do that. They're expensive, they take forever. Of course, a lot of those designs aren't going to be available in the future because it is gonna be more music focused with a little bit of YouTube focus. Um, and you know, and I'm going to be shipping out a lot of stuff personally myself. Shirts and things like that are still going to be print on demand, but I'll have copies of Seppo, physical copies of the CDs. You can get them signed. You'll see the drop down boxes if you prefer to have them signed, all that kind of stuff and more. And then, as you know, 
I like to do lyric sheets. Uh, maybe one day I'll put together a book because I like doing the art for all these lyric sheets that kind of accompany the lyric videos. And uh, we did an instrumental release from Six. So instead of doing a lyric sheet, I kind of did it like a movie poster. And I liked it so much that I turned it into 11 by 17 and we printed 300 of them so we could sell them or give them at cons and all that. And we're gonna do posters for a lot of things too. Although I think in the future I'm gonna go print on demand because I'm never gonna move enough of these posters to justify how many <laughs> I wanna make. But I wanted to show you, of course I have framed mine, but um, yeah, so for El Loco, that's my buddy Gringo Fantastico. You may know him from Disaster Peace Theater on YouTube. He's a fellow mutant. Um, there is one little typo in there. <laughs> oh well. But um, I'm really happy with these. These are high quality, glossy prints. Like anything you would get in a convention from an artist or whatever, they're that quality. Uh, they're really, really nice and we will be able to ship those out. I don't know if I'm gonna give an autograph option on those or not, I haven't decided. Um, as far as the new store, it should ship to Canada, the UK, and probably Mexico, and anywhere else I'm gonna have to figure out as we go along, because every time I add somewhere like this, I have to figure out. Actually, we did our taxes today, and my account, I was telling her how I'm doing all this, and she's like, oh God, you're gonna make my life so much more miserable next year. I was like, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, I'm making mine miserable too. Uh, but it'd be cool to kind of control my own store and most of my own merch. But again, print on demand stuff, we have a new place and I've worn some of the shirts, but here's the coolest thing. This is not in the store yet. So, you know, again, you can go buy a few things from the store right now if you find it on like the Spotify page or something, but I do recommend waiting a little bit longer until you see me actually promoting it because I wanna wash these and make sure they're good because they're great. Otherwise, check these lounge pants out I've been rocking. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's right, baby. Brand new Eric Butts lounge pants. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about that. Plus I do try to throw a little surprise in the packages of the stuff I ship. Granted print on demand stuff, I don't control, but I'm using a place called Printful. Much, I mean, the quality is, because again, Springs quality is fine, but this place has that same quality at a much lower price, much faster shipping. <laughs> It's better for all of us. So that's really the music update right now is it's really been more about merch. I've got to get on some videos and some lyric videos and stuff like that. I feel like I'm starting to fall behind. But again, I'm trying to remind myself, I just want to make music. I'm just a musician. I want to write songs, record songs, mix and master them. I've been breaking down some of these old cassettes I found for Patreon and like learning a lot more about mastering because I'm making some of this old stuff I got off cassette sound quality-ish. Um, you know, some of this stuff's like 30 years old. <laughs> But man, I got some cool plugins that really clean up the tape hiss and hum, and then I kind of give a little mastering remix to boost the bass and clear out some, you know, muddy frequencies and volume level it up and all that stuff. So very, very happy about how that's going. So again, you can still get on the Patreon, dollar a month. If you just want to listen to a new song every Friday from my 20, 30 years of previous music making, <laughs> or $5 a month if you want to be able to download every single song. Or not, it's up to you. The new stuff is definitely better. The old stuff is just really like my Beatles anthology archives, kind of, so. <laughs> but uh, that is the music update. Okay, welcome to 3 a.m. I have to be quiet. Uh, I'm going to make a cucumber Collins. I don't have mint. I don't need mint. I don't like mint. It's okay, but. Okay. We need an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice, an ounce of simple syrup. You saw Mary and I make this before. Two ounces of gin. We're gonna go with Hendrix today. Four or five cucumber slices. I got way more cucumber slices than I need right now. And some club spook soda and a sprig of mint for topping. I'm also gonna have to shake this in the other room. I can't show you me shaking it, but let's bring the camera down and see what's over here. And I got this from cooking, cooking.com, maybe, I don't know. All right, the bottom of a mixing glass, we're gonna muddle cucumber slices, lemon juice, and simple syrup. Four or five slices of cucumber. These are big slices, so I'm gonna go with four. All right, ounce of simple syrup, ounce of lemon juice. Pretty much equal parts water and sugar boil down. Alrighty. Nice. 
place. Clean that up. Okay. Give it a bit of the old. <laughs> Get out your 3D glasses. some of those other cucumber slices down here. All right, I think that's probably good. Okay, I'm gonna add the gin and some ice. So two ounces of gin. four ice cubes in there and shake it in the other room. Give me just a moment. Okay, I actually did five cucumber, or five slices, or five ice. I'm gonna give this about a 10 count shake. I'll be right back. in a Collins glass. I did about 10 ice cubes in there. <laughs> Strain. Gotta get around those cucumber slices. Okay. All right. And then we're gonna top it off for club soda. Not drunk, you're drunk. I need to turn the heat up on these beans. Doesn't quite look like what I'm used to, but let's go for it. Hmm. I grabbed a crab straw. Oh, that's really good. Hmm. Lemon's not too tart, but it's present, very present. The hint of the cucumber in there. Don't really taste the gin too much, so that's good. Balance of flavors, the simple syrup sweetens out that lemon. Mm. Mm. That's really tasty. 
That's another one I would make again for sure. That's really tasty. Right on. Cheers. And just like that, we have finished another vlog. Shorter one, but sometimes that happens. I'm sorry I could not cook cook. I did sort of cook something, but I'm saving it for a future vlog because all I really did was marinate and bake some chicken thighs. <laughs> and I'm gonna do something more with those. This drink, I really like it. We did see a crap ton of movies this past week, but I think the Oscars stuff covered most of that. <sighs> God, it's like 3.20 in the morning. I'm almost done making, Mary makes this summer salsa and she's making some for a potluck at work and yeah, she used to make it with all pre-bought canned goods and it was good, but you know, then she met me and I'm like, no, let's make a bunch of stuff fresh. <laughs> so that's why I'm making her a bunch of different types of beans for it. I'm gonna chop up her cilantro and stuff and I think it's a little bit better. <laughs> Still, it's great, it's her recipe, but just a little bit fresher. Um, I'm excited about merch, I'm excited about music, I'm excited about getting back to music, there's no way I'm starting tonight. It's 3.20, it's 31, it's snowing out. Ugh. Tomorrow's pasta night for me, we're getting like a pesto pasta with shrimp, it's gonna be so good, even though we probably really should not have had the Indian food today, because I ate my entire uh, Kahari Gosht. It was like lamb and like tomatoes and ginger and peppers and it was fucking awesome. <laughs> masalas, man. You want some great Indian food in Lexington, masalas is it. There's some other great places too, but that's my jam. Um, I feel like there was something I was going to tell you. Oh, I got WWE 2K23 downloaded. Looks like I can play it now. I was tempted to do my unboxing, my card pack unboxing because I got a $100 gift card. But uh, I don't think I'm going to do that tonight. <laughs> I think I'm going to wait till tomorrow. And that way I can be really loud and excited. I may do that while I'm having my coffee. And then Mary and I can start trying that game see what we think. Did some trailers. Things are scheduled. I just got to do this and the cocktail onto the vlog and put music into it and make a thumbnail and it's done. <sighs> Should not have spent most of the day out. Monday is my busy work day. But I, think, I mean, granted, we got our taxes done. First time uh, joint filing now that we're married. And then celebrated with some good food. Wish we'd gone for tacos and margaritas, but it's probably better off we didn't at this point. Watched a bunch of shows, caught up from Sunday. I guess Sunday, also during the Oscars, hurt me and set me back as well. Okay, but that's it. I'm going to get out of here. So comment below. Let me know. Y'all have a good time. This is a good one. What are you thinking? You excited for my music? You excited about my pants? I'm excited about those. I'm really, I think that's a pretty fun little design. Oh, my stomach is rolling. I might need to go to the bathroom. All right, so comment below. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. Other than that, you can click the thumbs up button. Give me the good old thumb of encouragement. Mary made me some art, finally. We'll talk about that in the future. Although I'm a little annoyed. Something I ordered like two weeks ago with certain art on it just still says in production. I'm like, where the fuck is it? I've never used this company before, so I'm like, Arr. Another reason you might want to wait a little bit. Like, when you see me start promoting my merch store, that's when you want to buy some stuff. <laughs> but give me a minute, okay? You can order now. You just might get a better deal or get more options if you wait a little bit longer. <sighs> All right. All right, comment. All right, we did a thumbs, thumb encouragement. Oh, yeah. Remember that we will get through this. We will get through this together. Check out my music anywhere you listen. Spotify especially. I really need your help there. I was on a playlist. It was getting me, oh, I mean, not great numbers, but for me, pretty consistently good numbers, and it seems to be tapering off now. Oh, so help me out. Check me out. Look up Eric Butts. And, of course, ericbutts.com or linktree.com slash ericbutts. And, uh, you know, get ready for the Mary EP Part 1, March 24th, 2023, Midnight Eastern. It's awesome. I just listened to it again last night. I haven't listened to it in a couple weeks. It's so good. I'm so happy with it. Okay. Also, more content ways to support the channel with the links in the description below. So click that see more button to see more butts. I'm going to get out of here, finish this vlog, use the bathroom, finish, no, get out of here, finish this vlog, finish Mary's beans, you start the dishes, use the bathroom, and then I can finally relax for a bit tonight. Oh, I'm exhausted. I stayed up way too late last night. So I'm going to do all that and more, and I'll see you all later, okay? I love you. I'm doing Grogu noises. All right, I'll see you all later. <laughs> Bye.